Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we would continue uh, solving different problems related to um, trigonometric series. Um, there is nothing really new about um, these problems. They are based on the same principles which the previous problems um, were built upon. It's just to basically to, 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 to train your thought uh, to go into this direction when dealing with these problems. Um, one more comment which uh, probably is necessary. Um, there is always a question, well, why do we need this? I did answer this question many times, so let me repeat it again. Um, I doubt very much that in your practical uh, experience you will need to solve problems like this. They are just the brain exercises. All the different things which we can throw into um, the mind of a student which would basically force him or her to, to creatively approach um, whatever problem uh, is in front of him. Uh, that, that's good. That, that's the purpose of this website. So, again, do not consider these problems as anything practical. Um, I just can't even imagine if there are any practical problems related to this. Maybe, but I just don't know. It's only for uh, training your mind to be creative, analytical, logical, etc. So, that's the purpose, and you should, and, and you should really approach all these problems, most of the problems in this course, as just the training exercise for your mind. All right. Uh, now let's do the... Okay, I have two problems for today, and I will try to be accurate and not make a mistake. So the first one is sine x times sine 2x plus sine 2x times sine 3x plus etc. plus sine nx sine n plus 1x. So as we see, we have um, this particular series of n members, and each member is a sign of some number multiplied by x times sign of the next number multiplied by x. Now, we have to convert this uh, <coughs> series, which, which is very long actually, into a compact formula where obviously n and x and some trigonometric functions um, will be uh, the arguments. All right, now. Um, we did use this particular uh, technique before, and we will use it again. We will convert the product of two signs um, into a sum of something. Now, sum of what? Obviously, trigonometric functions. Now, um, since I never remember any formulas except the very basic ones, um, I do remember that in the formula for a cosine of a sum of two angles, there are uh, two members, one is the product of cosines, another is the product of sines. So let me just remind it. So cosine of u plus v equals cosine u cosine v minus sine u sine v. So that's product of sines. And obviously cosine of u minus v is equal to a sum of these two. So how can I get only the product of sums uh, of sine of sines? Well I have to subtract from this I have to subtract this. Cosines will will be reduced and I will have only the product of two sines. So sine times sine minus sine times sine will be two. Sine u sine v is equal to uh, from this, we subtract that, right? So it's cosine u minus v minus cosine of u plus v. So that's the formula. Now, if I will use this formula for u and v equal to x and 2x, and then 2x and 3x, and then 
etc. nx and n plus 1x, well, let's see what happens. All right, so x is u, 2x is v, right? So I have, well, first of all, this is 2, so I have to divide by 2. So it will be 1 half. 1 half, and let's open the square bracket. Now, cosine of u minus v, u minus v. So x minus 2x, that's minus x. But the cosine is um, an even function. So the cosine of a negative angle is the same as cosine of the corresponding positive one. So I will just put cosine of x minus cosine of their sum, u plus v. Now, what's the u plus v? It's x plus 2x, right? So that's 3x. Good. Now, next one is, um, we will uh, use 2x and 3x. 2x and 3x. Difference is, again, minus x, but cosine is even function, so I can put cosine x minus cosine 2 and 3 is 5. 5x. So, etc. plus. And the last one would be uh, cosine of the difference, which, uh, which is, again, minus x, but the cosine is an even function, and minus... Uh, cosine of 2n plus 1x. So that's what our sum uh, has become. Now, is it better? Well, it's obviously better because these guys are the same. The number of these guys is obviously the number of members in this sum, which is n. So I can put immediately 1, 2, 1 half um, n times cosine x minus 1 half of 3x, 5x, etc. They are all um, odd numbers. So cosine 3x plus cosine 5x plus etc. plus cosine 2n plus 1x. Also n numbers in this sequence. Now, this is something which we have already um, uh, done uh, in, in the previous lecture. We uh, were summarizing a more general, uh, more general uh, series. It was cosine x plus cosine x plus g plus cosine x plus 2g, etc. Remember this? Now, in this case, instead of x, we have 3x. And instead of g, we have 2x, right? So it would be basically the same thing. Uh, so if I remember the formula for this, I can just substitute into this formula. But obviously, I don't. So I will repeat the derivation for this particular formula. So, um, let me completely omit this particular member from all further um, calculations, and I will just concentrate on this sum. All right? Now, uh, what can I wipe out? I can wipe out, I guess, this one. So, we have to calculate the sum of these. Now, if you remember, again, in, in the previous lecture, it was uh, quite obvious, um, it's very helpful in this case um, to multiply all the members of this um, uh, trigonometric series by... Um, by... Um, the sign of an angle which is half of the difference between corresponding between consecutive members. So the difference is always 2x, right? 3x, 5x, 7x, etc. So the half of this distance is, is, is x. Now, why? Why am I doing it? 
Well, basically, because of this thing. If I will be able to uh, represent this as something minus angle, and this is something plus angle, then they will probably reduce each other. I mean, if you remember, that was actually the point. So if the difference between consecutive arguments is, in this case, 2x, I will multiply everything by sine of half of the distance, which is sine of, sine of x, and see what happens. All right. What happens is, so I do this uh, cosine x without any uh, changes. So I divide by sine x, and I multiply everything by sine of x. Cosine 3x, sine x plus. Cosine 5x, sine x plus. Cosine of 2m plus 1x, sine x. Now, why did I do it? Because a product of sine by cosine, I can also represent in a similar fashion. So let me just represent it first. We don't need this piece. Now, same as the difference between cosines give me the product sine by sine, um, the product of sine by cosine can be obtained from the difference of the sines. So let's remember the formula for sines. Uh, sine u plus v equals to sine u cosine v plus cosine u sine v and sine of u minus v equals sine u cosine v minus cosine u sine v. So how can I get cosine u and sine v, which we, which we need here? I have to subtract like this. So what I will have is 2 cosine u sine v, because this will be reduced, and this will be doubled, equals to sine u plus v minus sine u minus v. Right? So that's the formula which I will use. Now, u is 3x, v is x. So, and there is a 2 here, so I have to substitute 1 half of sine of their sum, which is 4x, minus sine of their difference, which is 2x, plus. Now this, sine of their sum, which is 6x, minus sine of their difference, which is 4x. Next will be 8 minus 6. You see, this is reduced with this. Next will be 8 minus six, 8 sine of 8x minus sine of uh, 6x, and this will be reduced, etc. So it's always the first one uh, would be uh, re the first from the previous will be reduced to the second from the next one. So the very last one would be uh, sine of their sum, which is 2n plus 2 of x minus a sign of their difference, which is 2n x, which is also will be reduced. So what's left is this and this. So it's n over 2 cosine x minus 1 over 2 sine x. Then another 2, so I will have to put 4 here. And the only thing in the parentheses in square brackets would be sine of 2n plus 2 minus sine 2x. Now, 
this is basically the end of it. I mean, if you want, you can convert the difference between signs into a product, so the formula might actually look a little better, or not better, I don't know, it just doesn't really matter. But in any case, this is um, one of the final formulas which, which can actually um, be stopped at, and uh, no, no, no further um, reduction is necessary, because you don't need uh, all these uh, uh, dot, dot, dot things, which signify there are certain numbers, certain terms, members of the sequence which we didn't really write. This is a compact formula which represents this particular uh, series, which we can, again, we can a little bit change as well, but doesn't really matter anymore. We have the compact formula without any kind of uh, unnecessary uh, dots. All right. That's basically it for this particular problem. Now, as you see, I did use a couple of formulas here, but it's not really something which I remember. I derived it right on the fly. And the only thing which I do remember, and quite frankly, I do remember it quite well, <laughs> it's uh, sign of the sum and, uh, sign of, uh, and, and sign of the, uh, of the difference between two angles, and cosine of the sum and cosine of the difference. This actually is something which you probably have to remember. And it's not really a big deal, only like two formulas. You don't really need the second one because the second one can be derived from the first one. Like for instance, if instead of V you put minus V, cosine of minus V would be uh, the same as cosine of V, but the sine of minus V would be minus sine of V, right? So this second formula is derived from the first one because sine is a, uh, an odd function and cosine is an even function. Same thing here. If you know the sum, the cosine for the sum, and that's the, sum, that, that's the minus sign here. You have to really remember that for a cos, for a sine, this plus corresponds to this plus. For a cosine, this plus corresponds to minus. But how to derive it for minus v? Well, if you substitute minus v, the cosine part remains the same because the cosine is even function, and the sine would reverse, and that's why you have instead of minus you have plus. So only two formulas basically. Sine of sum of two angles and cosine of uh, sum of two angles. Everything else is derivable. And derivable quite easily, as you see, I did it right on the fly, basically. All right, that's it with this particular problem. Let's wipe it out and go to the next one. Second and the last problem for this lecture is the following. Sine cube x plus sine cube x plus d plus sine cube x plus 2d, etc plus sine cube n minus 1 uh, x, sorry, sine cube x plus n minus 1 d. So from x plus 0 d to x plus n minus 1 d, n members. And we have to calculate this sum. Well. Uh, here is something which you might remember or might not. Um, I, um, in one of the lectures, I think one of the first lectures about uh, trigonometric identities, I derived the formula for sine of triple angle. And that formula actually contained sine in, in, in the third degree, sine cube. So I would like to use this formula to express sine cube as a sine of a triple angle and something else. But I do need the formula for sine of the triple angle, which again, I don't remember, but we can very easily derive it, right? So, sine of 3 phi equals, well, that's obviously sine of phi plus 2 phi equals sine phi cosine 2 phi uh, plus 
cosine phi sine 2 phi equals c. Now, cosine 2 phi, or cosine of phi plus phi, is cosine cosine minus sine sine. But angle is the same, phi plus phi, so it's cosine square and sine square. So sine phi cosine square uh, phi minus sine square phi plus cosine phi. Now sine of 2 phi is sine cosine plus cosine sine. But again, since angles are the same, phi and phi, I can just put 2 sine phi cosine phi equals. Uh, I would like everything to be in sines, which means this cosine I will replace with y minus sine square phi, if you don't mind. And here, you see cosine and cosine would be uh, cosine square. I also replace it with uh, 1 minus sine square phi. So what will I have is sine phi times uh, 1 minus 2 sine square phi plus 2 sine phi times cosine square, which is 1 minus sine square equals. All right, now let's open all these brackets. Sine phi minus 2 sine cube. Sine phi minus 2 sine cube phi plus 2 sine phi minus 2 sine cube phi equals sine and 2 sine, that's 3 sine phi minus 4 minus 2 minus 2 sine cube phi. Now, why is it important? Well, because I can express sine cube in terms of sine phi and sine 3 phi, right? So sine cube phi is equal to one fourth, right, of three sine phi minus sine three phi. All right. If sine of three phi is equal to this, then four sine cube is equal to three sine minus sine of three phi, and then divide by four. Right. So, what it means is that every member I can replace with two members and basically completely separate this particular sequence into two different sequences, one with single angles and another with triple angles, right? So, this sum is equal to, I don't really need anything here. that is already done. So that's my formula for sum cube. So equals to one fourth. Now, three sine x minus sine of three x, right? Actually, I don't need to close this. Let's just continue, plus. 3 sine of x plus d minus sine of 3x plus 3d, etc. And the last one would be uh, 3 sine of n minus 1 x minus sine of 3 n minus 1 x. Now, as you see, I can separate these guys from these guys and have basically two different things. One is three quarters, this is three and this is four, right? Of sine x plus sine x plus d plus sine x plus 2d plus etc. plus sine of n minus 1, uh, sorry. x 
plus n minus 1. D. Oh yeah, I, I have made a mistake here. It's uh, d, and this is plus x. And same here. This is d, and this is Right? Yeah, that's better. So, one is these guys plus another is, well, actually minus, not plus, minus, minus one force. This is one force. And I have here sine of 3x plus sine of 3x plus 3g plus sine of 3x plus 6d plus sine of 3x plus uh, 3 n minus 1. So, we have two sums, each one of them is actually the same as the one which we considered uh, during one of the first lectures um, dedicated to series. And um, again, you can use exactly the same approach as in the previous uh, problem. The difference between these two is d, so you have to multiply everything by um, uh, sine or cosine of uh, d over 2 and each product can be represented as a difference between uh, two different angles and everything would be basically reducible uh, except the first and the last, and the last one and uh, similarly with this case in, instead of um, x you have 3x here and the difference is 3g not d which means you have to multiply it by sine or a cosine of uh, 3g over 2, right? And again, the whole thing will be uh, reduced uh, as soon as you convert uh, the product of trigonometric functions into, um, into the sum or difference, actually. So I don't want to do these calculations because it's obvious now. We are reducing the, uh, the problem which we don't know how to solve Two, two problems which we do know. We already did this particular thing a couple of times, so that's why I don't want to waste time. Um, but I do refer you to either corresponding lecture or basically the notes on unisor.com to this lecture, uh, which do contain basically the whole um, sequence of uh, formulas, etc. I do recommend, however, you do it yourself first, and then... Um, look at the result, check it with uh, the answer which is, uh, which is on the site, etc. Well, that's it for today. I do recommend you to, um, to use uh, full functionality of unresort.com to basically convert your studying into a real educational process. And to this you, you need some supervisor responsibilities either you yourself can be your own supervisor under a different username logged into, signed into the system, or your parent or your teacher or somebody else, they will enroll you as a student into the course, and then you can take exams, and uh, you will see the score on these exams, etc. Um, well, that's it for today, and uh, good luck to you. Don't forget, try to do everything yourself, and only then check, check the answers. Thanks very much.